In 2015, I started driving this car as my daily commuter. It's taken me everywhere, from as close as the local shops to across the vastness that is mainland Australia. And after all her years in service, I thought she might need a break. And more importantly, to preserve what's part of Australia's motoring culture. I think that's what I'm doing. You see, we've lost a lot of what we hold dear in a very, very short time. In the late noughties, we began to really see the fall of our vehicle manufacturing industry. First Mitsubishi, then Toyota. And in 2016, we got the shock of our lives when Ford Australia closed for good. What was most painful about that at the time was we already knew we were losing Holden the year to follow. And this, the VE series Commodore, was released in 2006 when it all started to come down. To try and put my point across, I'm first going to bring you here to the National Motor Museum nesting in the Adelaide Hills town of Birdwood. Here, they've put on a display of Holden's crazy concepts and some impactful cars. Let's start with this. Built in Adelaide in the year 1948, the 48 215, marketed simply as the Holden, was presented to the country as Australia's own car. A transformation from a local saddlery business founded by James Alexander Holden in 1856 to a division of General Motors, Holden beat Ford in the race to our first car just after World War II. As for the rest of these Holdens in the museum, they all share that same idea. This car is for you. Those from the bush to the suburbs, tailored to our taste and culture. Of course, we were bound for General Motors' international fleet as well. We had plenty of Euro and Asian cars throughout the decades, and even earlier Commodores were based off of Opal platforms. But they were all assembled here, and gave birth even to hard-hitting local names such as the Tirana. But, as I said, the noughties really started to shake things up. It's a common thought. So, rather than try and put it into my own words, I thought I might just borrow some that I know already work. A common thought indeed after reading this piece from SA Motor Magazine from winter 2020. That's how long I've wanted to be talking about this. Uh, written by a chap named Samuel Smith. What he's basically done here is written a comprehensive list of cars that hold made that are hits and why we'll remember them. He's also included a couple misses, one of which is the Holden Viva, and he writes about it roughly as follows. Quite frankly, we wish we didn't remember the Holden Viva at all. Positioned as a cheaper alternative to the Barina, a worry in itself, the Viva was essentially a rebadged day-wheeler SETI, paired with poor build quality and an ancient 1.8 litre engine. The Viva was a prime example of General Motors cost-cutting and did nothing but tarnish Holden's reputation as a premium Australian brand. Now, that last sentence is a very important one. Remember, Holden's original selling point was Australia's own car. By the time of the Viva, which is a 2006 model here, I believe, uh, we felt like we'd all lost that sense. And truly, we've all felt it. Let's use this as an example. This, which other countries might know as a Chevrolet, is a Holden Cruise, a car that in this iteration was built both in Australia and also overseas. But that didn't make a difference. At this point, it had embedded its name as one of the biggest lemons of the 21st century. So this is a Holden Cruise, and uh, it's done 67,000 kilometers. So far, it's had oil cooler lines replaced, the overflow tank, and the hose, and the water pump. Today, I was going to replace the thermostat housing, because that's cracked all along there, and it lost all of its coolant. Instead, what I found is one of the heater hoses is leaking from back here, and uh, we're not going to be replacing anything today till we find one of those. Cold, it's raining, and I don't want to be here. Look, I'd spent some time fixing that car's seemingly endless coolant issues, and once I'd finally gotten it back together from that moment, my friend messaged me, who was dealing with a similarly aged Barina, and he said, have you checked the oil cooler? Sure enough, not long after, the cooler had developed a leak. The rumours were true. It seemed. 
And what poorer timing than when they'd finally released this to the public. Dubbed the Billion Dollar Baby, the VE Commodore was the first all-Australian Commodore designed entirely by us. And Holden had spent that amount of money making a car that was thrown into the ring with a dying reputation. Was developed. This is a very big story and the stakes are extremely high. Over a billion dollars has been spent to bring Australia the long-awaited new Commodore. Get it wrong and Commodore loses its number one spot it's held for over a decade. Get, Get it right, right and Holden could take this car overseas to international success. Sadly, it was never going to be enough. On the 20th of October 2017, 70 years of Australian manufacturing had its curtains drawn by this. Build number 7,687,675, a VF Series 2 Commodore SSV Redline, destined to be a garage trophy. The year 2017 saw the factory build 175 cars a day, compared to 780 per day between June 2003 and July 2005. Remaining workers, of which there were less than a thousand at this point, watched the final local Holden roll off the production line at the Elizabeth factory slightly north of Adelaide. At that point, it felt like General Motors would be ready to finally lay the Holden name to rest. But it wasn't. A final attempt to keep the name alive after 2017 came in the form of the ZB Series Commodore. This entirely new Commodore burst into the scene with the seeming intent to start something new and fresh for Holden. Really, the car was nothing more than a rebadged Opel Insignia. I think you can see where this is going. Now, I'm in no position to say whether it was a good or a bad car, because quite frankly, I haven't spent any time with one. But if you know the difference between that and the rest of the Commodores, it was nothing like we knew. And in the eyes of many, myself included, it was quite a slap in the face and a middle finger to Watch the Commodore name die in agony. As the saying goes, you either die a hero or live long enough to see yourself become the villain. In 2020, General Motors announced they would axe the brand altogether from next year. Increasingly challenging for us to support a brand and a business that operates in just two markets. Uh, in short, GM desperately wanted a successful and sustainable holding and in both Australia and New Zealand. Um, we implemented a number of alternative strategies, but ultimately uh, GM has taken the decision that it's unable to prioritise the significant uh, investment required for Holden to be competitive and profitable long term. The immediate transformation of Holden dealers into MG and Kia and the likes began, and in the midst of a global pandemic, the Holden name vanished. But. That doesn't mean we have to forget what was good about the Lion Badge. It was a superstar in our own Australian Touring Car Championship, a place to house heroes such as Peter Brock, an employer to thousands of workers, and nearly every person you talk to seems to remember one of their relatives having an HQ Kingswood. Priorities, well, they change. For me, this car is expensive to run and insure, and I just need to start being a bit mindful of that. Start setting myself up a little bit more financially. In the meantime, of course, I want to keep it nice. Whether that's for myself or the next person to enjoy. Whether you knew the brand or not, grew up in a Holden or Ford family, or simply aren't into cars, it's with this display in the museum we can thrive in nostalgia of the golden days and truly understand why it was so hard to say goodbye.